Good morning. Uh, when Hannah emailed me and told me that I had the opportunity to speak this morning, she said, you have three minutes. And I thought to myself, clearly, she doesn't know me very well. And I also thought um, the timer would probably have to stop if I shared a tear or two. Um, I'm someone who believes very deeply in the power of testimony. And I um, am honored this morning to share a little bit of mine. About five years ago, I started waking up in the middle of the night. Uh, I would toss and turn for two or three hours. And I had all these ideas in my head about things I wanted to write. And I wanted to hold on to these great ideas until morning so I can get them down to paper. And it started getting a little ridiculous. And I started telling a few people, I think I might need to write. And the consensus was the same, that I needed to do two things. First, I needed to get up and write when I would wake in the middle of the night. And I also needed to keep a pen and paper by my bed. I started to do both. Then I reached out to a dear friend and author, Karen Custis James. And I said, I think I might need to write. And she said, you need to come to this conference. It was a women's leadership and networking conference. And they were going to be talking a little bit about writing and publication. And I don't remember everything that was shared at that conference. I do remember three things that happened that changed my life. And one of them was Carolyn stood up and boldly said to all the women in the room, go to seminary. And I did not think that she was talking to me. I also remember speaking with her husband, Dr. Frank James, who was our former provost at Gordon-Conwell as I attended a writer's workshop, and he said to me, Natasha, you are a smart African-American woman, and you have a lot of important things to say, and we all need to hear it. Therefore, you need to be writing something every day. So I started to blog. Then I met a new friend who thought that in my first attempt at an article, was good enough that she sent it to Christianity Today. And I received an email from them a couple of days later saying that they wanted to publish. And this began my journey to writing, and this began my journey to Gordon Conwell. I did not know what to expect when I came to Gordon Conwell, but I recall attending orientation I was surprised and elated by the diversity of our students. There were men and women, people from different races and ethnicities and countries. There were people of all ages and people that were from different professional backgrounds and ministry experiences and people from different denominations. And I thought to myself, this is going to be a rich experience. And it was, especially as I started to meet people and hear their stories. And during orientation, two things people normally ask you. They say, uh, what is your degree program? And the next question is, what do you plan to do with that degree after graduation? At the time, um, I was teaching women's Bible studies and leading women's small groups. And I applied to seminary because I just wanted to do that well. But I remember meeting two women on that day. And when I asked one of them what she planned to do with her seminary degree, she said, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. And I said, that's great. I met the other woman in the restroom. And we carried on a conversation as she pumped breast milk for her two- or three-week-old baby. And I just recalled thinking to myself that um, I love God's call for women. I love discipling them. I believe that he has important work for women to do in his kingdom. And I knew that these women understood that their most important life's journey and work would be committing their relationship 
and their lives to the Lord. And they understood that their life and those that they impacted would be greatly enriched because of that devotion. The excitement of orientation quickly faded, however, when the hard work began. <laughs> I took several classes, and uh, we were required to read 2,000 pages of reading per class. I had responsibilities at home. I was active in church ministry. I was still working at the time. I spent the first semester ignoring my classmates. Every time I had a, bake, a break, my face was firmly planted in a book. And when we had lunch breaks at school, I took a book and grabbed a sandwich and continued reading. I simply did not know how I was going to get all of that work done. <laughs> but God, in his infinite wisdom, corrected me. It was as if he whispered, Tasha, <laughs> this experience cannot be about the grades. See, some of my behavior was rooted in pride. I thought I was smart once. <laughs> then I went to the Naval Academy, worked really hard, struggled the entire way academically, and graduated as a solid C student. So I came to Gordon-Conwell and I thought, surely I can get an A in some Bible classes. <laughs> That was before I took Old Testament on Simlink. <laughs> and God reminded me that seminary needed to be about the journey and embracing the whole experience. And this was a matter of stewardship for me. And that's why I read every assigned book from cover to cover. And I internalized every assignment. And that's why I spent the rest of my lunch breaks having conversations and interacting with my classmates and my professors. And any aid that I got, it was because I loved the work. And I trusted that God would make a way for me to get it all done. And he did. Seminary has been a family endeavor. But every time that I came to a weekend course, I returned home to a clean house because my husband knows that I don't like a dirty house. And there was always dinner on the table. My daughter makes it clear to everyone that we are graduating and we are writing a book. And every time I finish reading a book or turned in an assignment, or received a good grade, she would say, good job, mama. I'm so proud of you. And I would sometimes feel bad because she would always want to have more play and I would always have more work. But it was important to me and it is important to me even today for her to have a mama that lives out the gospel that we talk about. Even my husband started to look more tired as the days and weeks of graduation grew near. And he says to people, we are about to graduate, and they look at him perplexed. And he says, she's doing all the writing, but I have to read that stuff. <laughs> this seminary journey was not all smooth sailing. In the last three and a half years, we have lost some dear loved ones. And I, let, I had to learn how to grieve all of my previous losses. We've moved states, we've changed jobs, we've lost our home, we've lost almost all of our financial resources. And through it all, God reminded me that I could trust him in times of surplus. And I can trust him when there appeared to be drought. The enemy tried to destroy our marriage, and I fought for a long time, and I was so weary and broken, and I just wanted to give up. And God spoke a word to me even in that, 
And he says, I have some things to teach you about grace and forgiveness and unconditional love and humility and bearing up under unjust suffering and sacrifice because these are the things that I've done for you. And I'm going to transform you through this. And Gordon Conwell was an integral part of that transformation. Two days ago, we celebrated our 10 year anniversary. And tonight we're going to party. <laughs> this has been a transformative journey for me on so many levels. I've been encouraged to pursue the Lord and to delight in him. I've been encouraged to use my gifts and talents for God's good purposes. I've been encouraged to love and be loved well. So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank the faculty for making Gordon Conwell a safe place for women and a safe place for me. And I wanna thank my family and friends for their love and support and for coming today. I carry you with me wherever I go. And I want to thank God for his infinite love and favor and faithfulness towards me. And this is the same God that loves you. May you be blessed by him today.